Bells have been ringing. The sad, sad news. Oh, what a Christmas <laughs> to have the Blues. But the Blues are good because the Blues are the Giants, and that's just what the Eagles need right now. That's what the city needs. That's what America needs is the New York Giants and Danny Cutler's DeVito coming to town on Christmas Day to get his ass whooped. Man, it's been a rough week, been a rough three weeks, Uh, you know, three game slide for the Birds. The Seahawks was low and, you know, they brought in Pencil Boy to be the defensive coordinator. Let me just tell you in general my thoughts. First of the defense, oh, oh, BG, the defense looked better. Yeah, it looked better because it was Drew Locke, which you still let him go down at the end of the game and get that touchdown. So it's the chicken or the egg. The offense should have scored more points. True. But the defense should have realized that they were picking on Bradbury or Badbury, whatever you want to call him, and make an adjustment. When Bradbury comes out at the end of the game and says, why are you playing the sticks? I was doing what I was told. So if you see that they're picking on this man and this man only, why are keep them in front of you for the field goal? No, you don't give any help over the top. Like I, I just, I don't understand. So as far as I'm concerned, I've never been a Patricia guy. I don't believe in Patricia, but Giving him the opportunity to come in and fix the defense against Drew Locke, Danny DeVito, the Cardinals, and then DeVito again. Oh, I wonder if the defense is going to look better. And then we go to the playoffs with playoff teams, and I just don't believe it. We're screwed at linebacker right now. Too many injuries. Uh, Shaq, uh, Leonard, Shaquille O'Neal, whatever his name is, he's dusted and old. So we're screwed. And, uh, you know. The guy that quit on us early in the season want to be a plumber's out here making plays for the Steelers. This is not working out for us on defense right now. Uh, Slay will be back. That'll be better. Uh, Ringo, the young guy, should be playing instead of Bradbury, so hopefully he gets benched. And going forward, we're okay with that. Maybe. But again, you let this guy come in to take over play calling when he gets to go against nobodies? That doesn't seem fair to me. Not that I'm a decide guy, but I mean, like, it's false bravado to think, oh, they fixed the defense. But again, you got to do something, right? Because Nick didn't make the call. Oh, he fired somebody. He didn't fire anybody. What did you fire him? I don't know. It's just so bad. And I'm talking really fast because I'm upset. You're upset. We're upset. I mean, I'm not crying about it, but I'm angry at this point. Then let's talk over to the defense. Nick Sirianni said it's his offense. Not defense. See, I'm mad. Let's go over to the offense. Let me calm down. Nick Sirianni said this is his offense. Don't blame the coordinator. So I will not do that. Nick is calling bad plays. He keeps talking about explosives. He's got Kelsey talking about explosives. Now Jalen's talking about explosives. How about we take the open stuff on the flat underneath and let our playmakers make plays like some of the other teams do? I know it's not as flashy. I know it doesn't feel like $250 million quarterbacking, but it is something that's available to you because everybody and their mother knows that you're going to Devontae and AJ and, my God, never go to Quez Watkins again. I don't know why he's on the team. I don't know why he's on the field. I can't stand him. He said he's going to redeem himself. He's trash. He's trash. He's trash. Got that out of my system. But Goddard's still there as a safety blanket. Let's get him more involved. And... Nick, stop calling for these explosives. Stop asking him to chuck it down the field. You literally went on TV in your meeting and said, we wanted a P.I. A.J. Brown doesn't go out and get P.I.s. He doesn't run back into players. He goes up over players and, and dunks on them. You wanted a P.I. late with two timeouts, running back wide open, five yards down the field, nobody around him could have got another five yards and been in field goal range to tie the game to go in overtime and see what happens, but you want to chuck the field down for a P.I.? That's embarrassing for you. You are coaching for your job, and it's been a stupid topic of discussion on the radio and and, and, and some uh, media, but this time, dude, you aren't a great coach anyway. I didn't believe in you. Nobody else wanted to hire you. This is Doug Peterson all over again. Doug Peterson getting interviewed by anybody else besides the Eagles – Nick didn't get interviewed by anybody besides the Eagles. They come in here, they assign you coordinators, and your coordinators leave, they assign you new coordinators, and you're supposed to just roll with it. This is everything that happened to Doug Peterson happening to us again. Everybody wants to throw it on. Hurts is just like Carson Wentz. To a man, he is not. His confidence, the way he carries himself, but now it's a problem because he carries himself with too much confidence and he doesn't get emotional. Well, guess what? You're lucky he's not getting emotional because he'd be like, yo, what is this play call? Oh, that's my thing. I'm I'm sorry I'm rambling, but this this how it feels right now. I gotta ramble. I gotta get it all out. But Jalen Hurts, he he's calling his own plays. That's, so I know one thing: he's not calling his own plays. If he was, the few times he's audible to something that Kelsey doesn't like, Kelsey's like, "Nah, bro, we're not doing that." And they've had arguments on the field before they hike the ball, and that happens rarely. 
So I'm sure that Jalen's just doing what he's told. And the way the coaches talk about explosives, in his mind, I've got to chuck it downfield. I've got to get big chunk plays. I just can't stand it. But, again, three winnable games, games you should win by a good margin, get your confidence up, get healthy, and then roll into the playoffs with three straight. Then you win the first round. Oh, that's four straight. Then you win the next game. Possibly, you know, if you're the second seed, I believe you could win two games in a row, and then you find yourself in the NFC Championship, which against I assume will be the San Francisco 49ers. And at that point, you'll feel like, hey, we just ran off five in a row. Anything is possible in the Kevin Garnett world of winning things. And you can go out there and try and put your best foot forward. But it starts this week with Danny DeVito and, uh, dude, we need this George W. bad. I keep saying it to people, but we do. We need it really bad. Uh, so... Jalen, I don't need him differently emotionally. I, I I see him post game. I see him pre game. I see him on the field. I see him laugh with people. But he's just business when he's in the game. And when you got Nick out here, you know, pom poming and wing flying and cussing everybody out, at least somebody's calm, cool, and collected. I I know that people love Nick Sirianni and his bravado and all that kind of stuff. I know it's Italian stallion Christmas. I get it, but I don't like it. I, I I like passion, I like excitement, but this dude has a problem reeling himself in. And at this point now, when you're losing, it's really embarrassing. Everybody starts picking on you because you have very little decorum. And when you go into your press conferences and talk like a meager mouse that can't speak English half the time, and then you're out there on the field doing stuff like that, you look like a, a Stefan Diggs who was flapping his wings like an eagle and then lost in overtime and broke his heart and cried. You're setting yourself up for failure. You're setting yourself up for embarrassment. And, oh, uh, gosh, I've been agitated all week. The whole season has been agitated. Like I said, technically they already ruined Christmas because I had to wake up Christmas Day with this feeling still in my heart and worried about if I'm going to beat the Giants. No, I'm going to beat the Giants. And I think I'm going to get my money for the Boston Scott anytime touchdown. I just need this game to get here and get done so they can save Christmas for me so I can wrap it up and be happy. Not that I'm not. You know what it is. You know how you feel. You know how I feel. It's the struggle bus this week. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. Everybody dry snitching to the media, fake stuff coming out. I, I, look, it's just really stressful this time of the year. If you're going to take these losses, you would rather have them come in the middle of the season and be coming on looking like the Rams are right now, winning five out of the last six. I mean, my goodness. But all that being said, if you made it this far, go ahead and hit subscribe. Subscribe on iTunes or Spotify, wherever you want to get the podcast, because the pod's going to be on and popping in the new year. In the new year, on Tuesdays, I'll be doing a live Gritty Nights where people could call in and I could talk to people about the sports, the Sixers, the Flyers, the leagues. I mean, I'm going to be talking about other stuff next year besides my team. I just started with my base. We're going to be just talking sports. So go ahead and subscribe. If you're here, if you made it this long, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss me. I won't miss you. You know what I'm saying? The IG, the TikTok, if you're there too, wherever you may be, wherever I may be, that's where you're going to be. Let's be there together is what I'm saying. So go birds. Joel Embiid is the MVP. I'm going to be digging into him hard, pause, after the holidays when I have a little bit more free time to do so. But my goodness gracious, we need this George W. Hopefully the Eagles come out here and do it for us. And uh, go birds! So much drama when we lose. That's why a win is a win. You got to take it as it is. Because when you don't win, this is what can happen. I'm out.